Hello, everyone. This is Mike Izbitsky, Technical Evangelist with Salt Security, and welcome to an episode of Anatomy of an API Attack. Today, we're going to be covering broken object level authorization. Let's take a minute to understand the attack sequence for exploitation of broken object level authorization flaws or BOLA flaws. Uh, really, the attack starts with an authenticated user session. Uh, we're going to actually dive deeper into a request in a, in a minute here, so it'll make a little bit more sense. But these attacks start with authenticated context, right? And this is why it's important to recognize that uh, access controls are important, but actually a lot of API attacks actually occur in authenticated sessions. Uh, so as an attacker, or I should say as a normal user, right, the normal expected flow, uh, I'm going to request some piece of data or object, right, as is in the term, right, broken object. We're talking about objects or data identifiers. Uh, so the normal expected behavior is that user is going to request a specific record or object, in this case, record A, and then the server is going to respond with that record or data to the API caller. Now, what happens with BOLA uh, exploitation is that an attacker has compromised that authenticated user session, or uh, maybe it's just a malicious user, right, uh, in the case of something like an insider threat. Uh, so I'm actually going to manipulate the request and now try to access uh, a different piece of data or object, right, in this case, record B. Uh, and the server, unfortunately, is not uh, verifying authorization levels correctly. Uh, this happens very uh, frequently in complex architectures because it's hard to um, enforce authorization across entire uh, systems and servers and workloads, uh, right? So it's not, not as simple as just one user uh, accessing one server. Uh, but the server responds with that record, right? It's kind of dumb to the, to the fact that this user might not be authorized to that piece of data. And that's it, right? That's that's kind of BOLA in its most simplest explanation, not terribly complicated. Uh, when you see a request, it'll make a little bit more sense. Uh, as I said, this is frequently used by attackers to access data or functionality uh, for which they're not authorized, right? So they'll, they'll reverse engineer applications and API traffic flows to understand what is the normal uh, API call sequence and then start to manipulate requests uh, to access things they're unauthorized for. Uh, this is the most common flaw and for good reason, right? I, I mentioned how it, it's very common in complex architectures, uh, but it ranks number one for a reason. Uh, and, and we see this very frequently in many API incidents. Uh, and there's many outcomes to this, right? Uh, it, it is essentially privilege escalation. So if you are kind of in the, the traditional security world, you might be more familiar with terms like horizontal or vertical privilege escalation. Uh, BOLA exploitation is another way to achieve that. Uh, but as an attacker, we're manipulating requests in flight. As I said, BOLA flaw, flaws are, are common uh, really everywhere. Uh, we see this particularly in uh, FinServe and uh, healthcare or health tech. Uh, just because of the amount of data they're they're holding that's of value to attackers uh, but as promised here's that request right and this is a really simplified one to kind of really hammer home the concepts in this case it's a it's a very simple uh get request and you can see the identifiers are are highlighted there right the id parameter and the file parameter and as an attacker uh, that's that's under my control, right? I can start to manipulate that using a tool like uh, Port Suite or Burp Suite or OWASP Z Attack Proxy. Uh, if you've listened to the account takeover episode of this anatomy of an API attack video series, uh, I do cover that a little bit more specifically uh, if you want to understand how, how do attackers actually uh, manipulate the API calls. Uh, but it's not terribly complicated. And as I said, right, in that flow, all the attacks start with authenticated context. In this case, it's it's just a very simple uh, cookie, authentication cookie or session cookie that holds that authenticated context for the user. And there's those parameters that I'm gonna manipulate. And then the server response, right? In this case, uh, it, it was actually an image, right? That's why the server response kind of looks like garbled data there. It's actually a, a TIFF image. In this case, it was actually uh, a check image. Uh, because this example is actually based on some threat research from our SALT Labs division. Uh, that research was published in July 2021. Uh, you can certainly take a look at the full report to get uh, deeper details uh, on what actually happened with that uh, large financial services provider. Uh, as mentioned, right, pr privilege escalation is one potential outcome. There's many. Uh, as I said, with that account uh, takeover example with uh, 
you know, how I dive into specifics on how intercepting proxy tools are used, um, BOLA is actually another way to achieve account takeover, right? So it's not just credential stuffing or brute forcing. Uh, you can actually exploit BOLA to take over accounts, uh, maybe manipulating 2FA requests, right? Redirect where the request goes to, to an attacker controlled device. Uh, data exposure is very common. Uh, this is often used to uh, scrape data in large volumes. Uh, and then functionality abuse, uh, which can tie into broken function level authorization, BFLA, uh, but it, it's different, right? You kind of have to think about, uh, am, I, am I changing object identifiers or function identifiers? In this case, it is, is very clearly an object identifier we're manipulating. Uh, and as I said, right, these, these are really common. We, we see these uh, very often in FinServe and FinTech, uh, but also healthcare and health tech. Uh, but really it can impact any organization that holds data of value to an attacker.